my name is Joshua O'Donnell. I'm Melissa Trask, soon to be Melissa O'Donnell. And this is kind of our little love story. I have known Joshua for over 12 years now. Um, he's been one of my closest friends. He's always treated me amazingly well. He's always been there for me when not everyone else was there for me. Um, I always had a crush on him, but you know, I just, he was very popular in high school. I wasn't so popular, so I didn't think I stood a chance with him. So when he asked me out for a date, um, I was ecstatic, but nervous at the same time. And I don't know, I've just been attached to him ever since. He's, you know, the love of my life. We've been through two or three deployments now. We've been to Qatar and Iraq and, you know, everywhere in between. Um, I guess it was May of 2010. We hadn't been dating for very long, but we decided to take a little road trip to Texas. And it's a 12 hour drive or, you know, a ridiculous amount of time. And we start driving there and we could sit in complete silence. And I think that's when I realized that, you know, this, this man is, is the love of my life. You know, I just, I can sit with him and be comfortable with him and not have a worry or care in the world. and. That's just kind of, that's how I knew. That's how I knew we were going to be together. And um, the last appointment when he went to Iraq was the toughest for me. It was, it felt ridiculously long. I think I sent him an email every day counting down how long until I would see him again. And that was the time, you know, I had already known I wanted to be with him. I already knew he was the love of my life, but that's when I knew that I absolutely just couldn't live without him. Um, the Army is extremely important to him, his family is extremely important to him, his friends are extremely important to him. Within like a month of dating, it just Joshua randomly put his dog tags around my neck and um, I knew how much the Army meant to him and so when he did that I knew how much I had, had meant to him and he left for on his first appointment and he made sure that he got a copy of dog tags for me and, and put those around my neck and I think maybe twice in my life I've had to take them off and I refuse to, to take them off because they're the only way I can keep them close to my heart sometimes. So We're going to do Afghanistan for about 14, 14 to 15 months. Um, it's eating me up inside but um, as hard as it is, it is when he leaves he always comes home to me. You know Melissa gave me this uh, unbelievable analogy months and months ago when we kind of were in the middle of our us you know dating and going out where she said that my whole life is like a puzzle and in this puzzle you know I know exactly how the pieces are gonna fit and this is true I I, I kind of know how my life is gonna go or I would like it to go I know where I want to live I know what kind of house I like to buy I know how many kids I'd like to have I know what kind of relationships I want with my kids, my family, um, the cars I drive, the activities and hobbies I'd like to do. I kind of know how my life's going to go. And Melissa always said that, you know, that she she asked me kind of before if the one piece of the puzzle that's missing is, is a wife, is a woman. And, you know, she said, you know, you just, you have this whole puzzle and it's like she doesn't know if she fits and you know it blew me away the analogy was amazing and how she worded it was, was better than I could say and you know what she never realized what she never thought of was she always fit she fit back in high school she fit when I first got to know her when we were 15 16 years old I knew she fit back then and you know, 10 years later I'm sitting here 26 years old and she's kind of asking me, you know, does she think she fits or does she think she's going to fit and work in the puzzle kind of like that is my life. And she always fits. Um, you know, with like Melissa, it's always been about, I, it's not about wanting someone. It's not about, you know, you like to spend time with that, with that person. It's not about someone making you happy or sad or someone you enjoy doing activities with like with Melissa it's always like I've always I need Melissa you know when I'm gone when I'm in Iraq when I'm gone 
I'm training, when I'm falling, I'm just going. I feel like she says it, she'll say it all the time. She feels like I'm going a lot. I'm out doing stuff. You know, like she needs to realize and know that I've always needed Melissa. I've always loved Melissa. And, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Um, when we started out, we met in high school. In about 1999, freshman year, in drama class is the first time I remember him. And he was dating my best friend soon after that, <laughs> <laughs> for a short time. Just a minor detail. Just a just a little high school romance there. <laughs> and we became fast friends soon after that. I guess we have Becky to thank for that. Yeah. I uh, I used to give her rides home from school. We had uh, even like I don't even think we had classes together. And uh, I kind of track her down towards the end of the day and I'd be like, what's up, hey, what's up? You want to ride, you want to ride? You know, because I could drive and I don't know if she didn't have a car or she wasn't 16 at the time. She wasn't 16, I don't think. But yeah, I used to, because when well, you know, I'd take her home, I'd take her home, I'd go in, we'd hang out at her house. It was kind of like my little way to step in, so. <laughs> so yeah, I think we had some harmless high school flirting, but never dated, well, anything like that. I always wanted to, but. Never time never it was happened. never right. Never yeah. happened. So we went to St. Charles Community College together. And my favorite part of the story is we, we were going together for a couple of semesters and we didn't even know it. And when we finally came across each other, just we ran into each other randomly one day. We started talking and, and we kind of got like kind of like a little place to meet almost that I knew where she was kind of going to be certain days and what have you. And I <clears throat> knew Melissa all Melissa's life uh, as since I've ever known her. She's been a huge blues fan. Huge Blues fan. You know, she will, if I can get tickets to the game, if I can get whatever, I know it's a guarantee she's gonna go with me. So, I run into her and I, I made up, I just completely made up this story. But I was like, hey, you know, my cousin actually works for Ticketmaster and he, he can get us tickets to a, a, a playoff game because the Blues were at the time were in the playoffs. Big deal if you know anything about St. Louis Blues. Never in the playoffs. So. She, I asked her, I said, I can get tickets to the Blues playoff. Would you be interested in going? And she absolutely was like, well, yeah. She, and I knew it was a lot. I knew it was for sure going to be a date. And so I went on eBay, <laughs> <laughs> bought ridiculous amount, uh, like two tickets for a ridiculous amount of money. I don't know what I spent. I know it was at least a couple hundred dollars for uh, Blues playoff tickets. And sure enough, we went. I went and made all the stops. <laughs> I picked her up, I opened up her door, we went out to eat, we went and saw the game. We got a little free towel where you waving around and everything. <laughs> I still um, have that towel by the way. Yes, it's in her room. <laughs> um, we went to, the you know, the game was awesome. Afterwards we kind of wanted to hang out a little bit, we hung out a little bit. We didn't really do much though. <laughs> and I got out of the car, opened up her door for her, walked her to her door, you know. And you kind of tell she's a little nervous. And she gives me a hug and on that hug she gives me a little kiss on the cheek. And she goes in, and it was a wonderful day. And I never heard from her again. <laughs> she never. He acts like he's pulling out all the stops, but he always treated me this way in high school. And as long as I've ever so known him, so as long as I've ever known him, never, never call me again. <laughs> I didn't know it was a date. <laughs> so, community college is over with. Years go by, and it was. New Year's, or right around, right before New Year's Eve, I just gotten back from uh, basic and AIT, the military, the army, and I sent her, of course, a Facebook message. No other way to contact me, to trash. And I said, hey, what are you doing? Let's meet up. You know, I'd like, I wouldn't mind seeing you for New Year's, blah, blah, blah. Kind of blows me off again. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> but finally, she really did. She messaged me back like the day after New Year's Eve. And we went on a date. I believe we went to Cold Peppers. I wine at Cold Peppers. Yeah. We had Cold Peppers, and then after Cold Peppers, we went back to my house and we watched a movie. And we never stopped seeing each other since. Been hooked ever since. <laughs> so, um, we have been dating how long now? Um, a little over one and a half years. One and a half years. Since what, January 2nd? January 2nd. 2010. 2010. <laughs> and we'll be getting married here November 11th, 2011. Yeah. 11, 11, 11. For whatever reason, I said 2012. Veterans and Day? Veterans, yeah, it just happens to be Veterans Day. We like the date 11, 11, 11. And uh, I'm going to deploy to Afghanistan in February 2012. 
and then when the right day strikes Melissa in 2013, we're gonna have a big hoopla reception and wedding and party. So vow renewal. Because we're, we're already married. Because we're already married. So that is our plan. That's our story. We're very excited about it.